I've been tormented by a lot of things and my face is bloodied and muddied. I haven't really taken care of myself. I want to be around for my kids. I had an older dad who died, um, you know, when I was very young and needed him. And if I don't look after myself, you know, how am I going to look after my children? I think I look very much like my father, very like my father indeed. It's kind of like revisiting him, he's not here, and I feel identical um, to him in a way. I've spent a, a, a lot of my life trying to be like my father. He was a very wonderful, amazing, charismatic, energetic, reckless, intelligent, um, extraordinary, sympathetic fellow. And if anything in my life, I'm trying to be less like my father because I think I've held on to him so strongly and kind of realised at the age of 43 that actually I, ha I have to let go and I, I think that I haven't um, grieved him since he died. Now, you know, I'm having a conversation with, you know, kind of stop talking about him so much, you know, maybe it's time to separate a bit from that and kind of say goodbye. in the middle of Dorset with just fields and forests and streams to go and play. The happy times that I remember when I was with my parents, um, but because of their, you know, exciting lives, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time with my parents. And suddenly I was at school with um, a lot of boys um, in kind of big dark dormitories and compulsory sports and chillblains and, um, you know, kind of teasing and, and it was very, very difficult for me. But, you know, I came out of the other end of it and, and it did to a degree, um, I think I just wanted to be at home. I used to do a lot of stuff because I thought I had to or I didn't want to disappoint people. I think I kind of grew up very late in life. I think I really only started growing up in my 30s. The great thing I got from my father, which my, you know, see, there I am mentioning him again, um, but, you know, he kind of said to me before he died, look, don't worry about the rest of your life, you're going to be fine. But, you know, make sure that you, you talk to a Greek goat farmer in the same way you would the king of, you know, wherever. Um, and I, I keep on talking so much that I keep on forgetting the question. Um, my children, uh, nothing can interfere with my time with my children. I won't let it. Um, they are these extraordinary things that I utterly adore and you need to concentrate on them they recharge me um, and I kind of they kind of fill me up with sunshine really they're they're amazing fishing I would do all the time given half a chance it's my place where um, nothing can get me I'm untouchable and I love it and I love fish I think they're beautiful I think I'd be a fish if I was reborn or a bear actually no I'd be a bear they, eat, they have an amazing diet, they eat lots of different things and they sleep a lot, which I need to do in my next life because I don't sleep much in this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'll settle with this, you know. Um, there's something gentle in there. Troubled and, and a little ravaged, but with some gentleness in there too, I think. I suppose people would assume that it's a homosexual face, somehow. M middle class. 